Hey everyone, welcome to Wednesday's edition of One Single Story. We're in the book of Proverbs this week. Proverbs 17 today would have been your reading. We're going to have a conversation about them with Jay Rivenbark and Chris Ricks Road. And it says, Better a dry crust eaten in peace than a house filled with feasting and conflict. A wise servant will rule over a master's disgraceful son and will share the inheritance of the master's children. Fire tests the purity of silver and gold, but the Lord tests the hearts. Wrongdoers eagerly listen to gossip. Liars pay close attention to slander. Those who mock the poor insult their maker. Those who rejoice at the misfortune of others will be punished. Grandchildren are the crowning glory of the aged. Parents are the pride of their children. Eloquent words are not fitting for a fool. Even less are lies fitting for a ruler. A bribe is like a lucky charm. Whoever gives one will prosper. Love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. A single rebuke does more for a person of understanding uh, than a hundred lashes on the back of a fool. And it, it, we'll touch on a few more of these, but th we got to the piece there where there's a lot of conversation about conflict and confrontation. So the question that I want us to roll around today is how does wisdom impact confrontation? Plays a huge role in it. Um, this passage covers a lot of aspects. Some things we should avoid, some things we, we should do, um, and it gives us some very practical things um, such as avoiding gossip and, and not being a part of slander and not dwelling on an offense. Um, all those come into play. Don't don't start quarrels. Avoid it on the front end if you can. And then he gets into some very practical applications that maybe we'll get to later on in the discussion. Um, one that I made note of was later in the chapter, I think it's verse 18, where he talks about um, securing debt or not securing debt because financial woes can create all kinds of confrontation. And um, I just love the fact it's full of practical advice. I would say... Wisdom in general helps you discern whether you should even be involved in this because there are some confrontations that people will throw themselves into that they have no reason to be there or ones that people will start up with them that you can just not be involved with. I think wisdom also gives you the discernment of working from an understanding instead of trying to conquer somebody like in an argument or something, maybe understanding where they're coming from or, you know, taking a step back and asking yourself, have, have I done wrong here? You know, do I have something I need to change? Yeah, you know, even later in the chapter, he talks about if you are in a confrontation, and, and not all confrontation, I would say, is bad. There, it can be a learning process. Sometimes it's necessary. But mm -hmm. he talks about verse 27, when you are in there, to use few words, Keep an even temperament, you know, that's important mm -hmm. in and, and with the conversation. And then he, he kind of shifts a little bit and he talks. And then there's just times appropriate time to just keep them mouth shut, mm -hmm. you know. And so he covers a wide range here of uh, avoidance, things to look for. If you are in it, how how to, to deal with it, um, you know, and some preventative things. And so it begins talking about uh, a house filled with conflict. I, other translations would say that slightly differently. Mm. Um, I'm not one to run from an argument, but I don't like want them all the time. Mm. You know, I don't want. <laughs> he likes them in spread out. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You need moderation. moderation. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's true though. Yeah. Um, I mean, even if it's stuff that needs to be addressed. Uh, it needs to be in moderation. It doesn't meet, need to be a priority every day. That's all That's right. Now, because then it becomes nagging. Yeah. It's like, you know, there's another proverb about, you know, dripping water. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just mm -hmm. always Non-stop. Can, can, mm -hmm. can, do you see anything good? Mm -hmm. Like, can we, And I hate being around people like that. There's people that just kind of thrive on, you know, basically just drama for the sake of drama, mm -hmm. you know. And I experienced that when I worked in the factory with guys. <laughs> some guys in the factory were some of the worst, especially if they had jobs that were just boring, monotonous. They would find ways to occupy their time and stuff, and they would just kind of get into these conversations. Or you might deal with the antagonist that knows you're a Christian, and they come up and they hit you with a sideways question just to kind of start almost like an argument. And eventually you just realize, 
I'm not going to involve myself in this. Yeah, so let's give people some practical advice about conflict. Is there anything more important than the discernment or the ability or the wisdom to know, should I be involved or should I not be involved? Is there anything more important than that? That would certainly rank up there mm-hmm. amongst some of the most important things okay. to be able to yeah. determine because if we could get to that point where this is just not something I need to be involved in mm-hmm. or it, it's going to take care of itself, I just choose not to engage in this, life would be so much better. The older I get, the better I think I get at mm-hmm. that. But, you know, when I was young, younger, like I felt like, Everybody needed to hear what I had, he had to, to respond. That's right. To, I, to yeah. everything. And I'm yeah. glad. Listen, I think almighty God, social media did not come along until <laughs> I was 40. Yeah. Oh. You know, I mean, I cannot imagine. I would have been hated probably because I would have felt like I got to I got to get involved in this, you know, in, in every situation. That's the, I, for me. I think that's supreme. Mm. Uh, for, uh, should I get involved? Should I not get involved? After that, what's next? Understanding the situation more than just what you're hearing from that one particular person. Just kind of knowing what what's actually going on because everybody has an agenda when they start in the form of conflict. Most people just want to win it, or people see it from their perspective. But sometimes you oh, really, there ain't no doubt. Now, yeah. if I roll into a conflict. <laughs> the older I get, I try to temper it down. I'm there to win. Yeah, and that's that's, that's <laughs> most people. I mean, but you just need to kind of understand. Okay, what what is actually going on here, and what are we trying to achieve? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So to answer your question, for me, the the next step in that process connects with what you're saying is to try to separate the issue from the person and separate the issue from your emotions. Mm-hmm. And that's a very difficult process to do. But when you, if you can take that step back and say, okay, th- this is the real issue, uh, can we deal with it rather than it become a personal attack or retaliation toward this person? And mm-hmm. if I can keep my emotions in check and deal with the issue, I'm going to be better off, they're going to be better off, and hopefully you'll get to a better result much quicker than if Yeah, and I think everybody's ability to do that is different. Absolutely. Some yeah. people take everything personally and see sure. everything personally. Other people, it, 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 pretty much everything's impersonal to yeah. them. It's just this, we're talking about the idea. Yeah, I'm going to be transparent here and say that through the years is one of the things that I feel like my wife and I have become much, much better at with each other. Um, if, if there's something that's a trigger or an issue – is to take a step back and even to say things like, um, you know, I'd like to have a serious conversation right now. Uh, you know, I want you to understand this isn't personal. This isn't an attack, but this is a concern to me. This is the issue. And when we do that, we're able to sit down, have that conversation pretty quickly, get to a, a resolution, at least an agreement and understanding, uh, you know, because it doesn't become about me trying to win you to my side. And sometimes in that process, I see and hear things from her perspective that I hadn't thought through or just hadn't honored or respected. And then we can get to a place, even if it is on, and there are occasions when you simply get to a place where you agree to disagree, mm-hmm. but you honor the person and the relationship and you're able to move on from there. So would you say that, that maybe number two, the first being the ability to discern, should I be involved? Should I not be involved? The wisdom to be able to, would, would the wisdom to listen be second then? Yeah, I would say yeah. so because it, you yeah. know, yeah, James okay. tells us, be quick to listen, slow, to, slow speak. to speak. After that, so you listen, you decide, okay, I, I need to be involved in this. Then I listen. What's next? What's what's the next place wisdom? I mean, because listening, I think, helps you discern, mm-hmm. you know, distinguish. To make the next yeah. choice. Yeah, so yeah. What, what's the next choice? For me, based on the way we're going, is should I speak or should I not speak? Mm-hmm. Because if you listen... You may hear something you didn't hear before and say, you know what, I don't need to address this. They they, they figured it out or what I thought was wrong, or, and, and you just mm-hmm. don't even need it. Have you ever gotten in a situation where you went in and thought, boy, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind? And Absolutely. Then, and then, and, and then all out. of a sudden when I listened enough, and all of a sudden you're just like, oh, God, I wish I hadn't even brought this up, you know, because you get completely disarmed because once you get more information, 
you're like, okay, it makes perfect sense why their perception would be that. Therefore, and at that point, the, to me, the best option doesn't always happen, but the best option is just own it. Say, you know what? I, I apologize for that because I was looking totally from this perspective. Now that I hear that, it makes sense. I see that, and, and then we can move accordingly. And sometimes if somebody's coming to you not with an issue with you, but just coming to you with an issue, sometimes by letting them just talk and you kind of listening through things, half the time they almost walk themselves to their own conclusion of what That's they need true. to do after they and they're put it out there. Mm-hmm. They kind of take a little bit more ownership of it and be like, you know what, well, maybe I shouldn't have done this or maybe I should do this. And you can just, sometimes you can just nod along and be like, yep, yep. That's, that's it. And then at that point there, they haven't received any advice from you that, you know, that can, that they might turn around and be like, well, you told me to go and do this. So after that, what's more important, temperament or word? I would say temperament. Yeah, I, I think know. temperament because without the right temperament, I don't think it positions another person to really listen to what, what the yeah. words are. Um, I think both are extremely important. And to me, words matter. Um, again, transparent. In in discussions with people at times, um, trying to active listen to them, you know, and, and say, you know, what I heard you say was, and that's not what I said at all. Well, what did you mean? They said, well, why did you just say that? You know, uh, words do matter, but temperament, you know, you can say the right words, but with the wrong attitude or motive, it, it's probably not going to be effective. Mm-hmm. Now, this is a personal observation. Mm-hmm. This is not what I, I, I would advise Okay. In general, I think temperament is more important than words. For me, I would rather your words be right than your temperament. Mm. For me, mm. yeah. I, I would rather you be have a pissy attitude, <clears throat> but say exactly what needs to be said so I can sort through it and deal with it. But that's, that is solely me. Like I yeah. recognize it, it is a personality trait and I'm in a, I'm in a narrow lane and there are not many people mm-hmm. like me. And if you know somebody that's like mm-hmm. that and you can have that kind of conversation, you can save a lot of time, you know, by just being very direct and saying something, but you, you have to know that person. Yeah. But I can't do well. that with my wife. Yeah. yeah. And that's also information uh, and communication coming toward you mm-hmm. that, that you're talking about. And, That's right. And but then turning it around and sending communication information back, I would say the, not always, but the vast majority of time would probably necessitate that temperament over. Mm-hmm. Well, over, like I said, I believe yeah. temperament is yeah. more important than words in general. I'm speaking solely of me and people who the have key, my personality yeah. type. Yeah. Like. I would rather you have an attitude and say what needs to be said and say it right. Like, cause the words do matter. Like very much that will throw me off more than using the wrong words, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I have trigger words too. <laughs> what are they? Let me make <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> words yeah, well, I'm pretty toy. public about uh, always and never <laughs> yeah. every, yeah. like I hate those words. Yeah, the absolute, yeah. 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 But I mean, with, with this conversation right here, this is why it's absolutely key when you have any kind of these confrontation problems to never sort them out here in, right in texting yeah. and emails or anything like that because you can't pick up on the temperament you can't pick up on the voice inflection body, body language. language yeah you when know. you put you put whatever temperament you're in or that particular that's right moment you apply on their words their, yeah yeah and that's so yeah. somebody could be sending you something just kind of like direct but positive right and you're in a bad mood and you read that and like well that was kind of a jerk yeah. you know yeah or they're mm-hmm. sarcastic or yeah. something. And, I, you know, I so, you know, Jay, you mentioned, I the, that's the thing I have to be careful of is I'm perfectly fine if your attitude's a little bit off, but you say what needs to be said. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, when I communicate back to people, they don't like that, mm-hmm. you know. And it, usually it's not my attitude, it's my aggressiveness that I can say it with. You know, it's usually like I'm not mad or angry. It's just like, you know, I'm just coming head on, you know, yeah. and, um, and even sometimes even picking mm. last night, you and I were at the movies and there was a person from your campus sitting down from mm. me and my wife was already in there. She had gotten in there ahead of time. And, um, she took text me and told me she was like middle way. And when I got in there, I said, well, why didn't you tell me 
to look for this person's big head like this. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I said that where the other, where the person yeah. could hear me because they uh -huh. they were taking they can take a joke. And this lady behind me is like, oh my God, that's can't believe you that's said horrible. That. Yeah. I can't yeah, she yeah. said, yeah. you know, I had a she thought I had offended yeah. the lady, but yeah. she didn't know that's right. the, the dynamic. dynamics in the relationship that's right. yeah, that were in place. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you have to be aware of all of those things. Mm -hmm. And I would say there are times that people could have uh conversations that they have and they can't just think about themselves. They got to be aware of who else is a who else is yes. observing that because they may walk away with a completely different, they, those two people hate each other. <laughs> well, no, not really. They don't hate each other. You know, it's just, you know, one of those things. It's obvious confrontation, conflict arises. It's inevitable, but having a process and a, um, a system in place to help address it, I think that's the, the bigger part of wisdom that we learn. Yeah, and if I, I would say the number one thing people could do where conflict is concerned is learn to stay out of most of them mm. would transform their life. Mm. The rest of it you can learn. But if you learn to just keep your nose clean, you'd be better. Mm -hmm. off. Well, thank you for joining us today on this edition of One Single Story. Hope you'll be back tomorrow, and we'll continue a conversation about the book of Proverbs.